I was born and raised in the beautiful tropical island of Puerto Rico. I had great parents and a very happy childhood. Like most kids, I started going out by senior year of high school. Going out dancing was a big deal, and I always had fun with girls and boys. Rumors got around, and my mother heard that I danced with boys as much as girls. Everything in my house became a living hell. When they asked me to join a religious leader and psychologist for conversion, I accepted hoping to return to normal. I was willing to do anything to save my home. I went to therapy for weeks, but I felt rejected from my family, like I had lost the trust and love of my parents. The conversion therapy only made rumors about me worse. I felt things would never be the same with my family, so I left. I left with nothing. I was 19 and felt my whole life was over. I enrolled in a local university and felt better, but I was also vulnerable to risks I had never thought about. I spent my days studying and nights bartending to support myself. I was making lots of friends and feeling I'd be able to go back home when I graduate. One day, some friends and I went to donate blood at an event in our university. That's when I found out I was HIV positive. I was 22 years old and my life seemed to end all over again. I finished my degree, but I didn't think it would help to share my truth with anyone around me. Even if friends supported me, they would be worried. So I didn't tell anyone and moved to New York City so I could die alone. I wanted to help others with the time I had left. I wanted to help those affected by the virus and learn as much as I could. I worked with the community in all kinds of great organizations. Gandhi said, if you want to find yourself, lose yourself in the service of others. And this actually led me to sign up for a clinical trial that saved my life. I got really sick and the doctor said I would die, but I survived. I continued my community work and by 1996, I was taking a combination of medications that made my viral load undetectable. I spent so long preparing to die, I had to plan my life now. I developed a good reputation and got recruited for a national organization to continue my work with awareness and clinical research. Community work became my calling. Because I wasn't hiding and was keeping myself informed, I was exposed to newer treatments and practices that could make my virus undetectable. I could tell my story and make others aware that becoming undetectable means you are untransmittable. For anyone with HIV now, undetectable equals untransmittable is a game changer especially for anyone who lost hope, like I once did. The hard moments taught me lessons for the better. I can live in the present now and savor every moment. Love, Fernando. People living with HIV, who take their medication as prescribed and have an undetectable viral load, stay healthy and have, effectively, no risk of transmitting HIV to their sexual partners.